Good afternoon. As you are aware, uh, many sources are indicating that the Trump administration has named Redstone Arsenal uh, in Alabama as the permanent home of the U.S. Space Command. As mayor of Cower Springs, I am extremely disappointed by this development. I've said from the beginning, as have so many in Colorado Springs, that if this process was a merit decision, Colorado Springs would prevail. It is not in the interest of national security and the American taxpayer to move Space Command. I assure the residents of Colorado Springs that the city has made an extremely strong case to be the permanent home of Space Command, and that we had every indication that the Air Force was impressed by our presentation and by the community commitments we made in support of Space Command's future. The application process, you know, had a weighted scale, things that they were concerned about, the, the cost to the government, the cost of moving, uh, the support for the military, uh, your current space assets located in your community. Uh, folks, there's no way that any other community in this country could score higher on those categories uh, than Colorado Springs. Uh, we put forth what we thought was a, a very robust uh, number of commitments to support the future of Space Command, uh, which uh, totaled an estimate of about $130 million, uh, as much as uh, 1,500 acres in land that the city owns uh, in uh, Peterson Air Force Base that would be available to the Air Force uh, under any circumstances, including fee simple ownership. Uh, we would, uh, uh, any construction that took place in support of Space Command would be free of any uh, city or county sales or use tax. Uh, utilities would put uh, generation capability even closer uh, to uh, Peterson to further uh, their reliability and redundancy. Uh, that alone, in, in connection with the reductions in utility rates, was about $58 million. Uh, from the private sector, we had $11.5 million in, uh, to create a uh, astro uh, aeronautical uh, degree program at the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, and $5 million of private funding for expansion of a uh, child development center at uh, Peterson Air Force Base, which is one of the things that the Air Force uh, was asking about. Uh, bottom line is, folks, uh, given the criteria that they gave us, uh, I am uh, deeply disappointed and very surprised that the Air Force uh, would choose any other location. And frankly, uh, my concern is that politics played a significant role in this result. Um, as you are hearing today, uh, there are sources uh, throughout the government, uh, most uh, virtually all of them uh, wanting to remain anonymous. Uh, that uh, indicate that uh, there was, in fact, a politic part of this uh, result. And uh, on behalf of the city of Colorado Springs, I believe it would be wholly appropriate, and we would request that Congress and the Biden administration direct the United States Air Force to provide full details regarding the recommendation that was made uh, to the president and the the role that President Trump played in this decision. I think then and only then can we get to the bottom uh, of the extent to which politics uh, played a role in this decision. And as all of you know, historically, base decisions have been made free of politics in the interest of the American taxpayer and the interests of national security. Uh, prior to this press conference this afternoon, I had a telephone conference with U.S. Senators Michael Bennett uh, John Hickenlooper, Governor Polis, uh, Lieutenant Governor uh, Primavera, Congressman Lamborn, and Com Congressman uh, Jason Crow uh, of uh, the Aurora area. Uh, we were all of the same mind. Uh, the, uh, the Senator's offices had sources within the Air Force uh, that had indicated to them that um, uh, Colorado Springs was, in fact, uh, the recommendation of the Air Force, and only at the direction of President Trump 
uh, did this go uh, a different direction? Uh, as I say, uh, so far, uh, no sources have gone on the record uh, uh, to that extent. And uh, what I am asking is that th the Biden administration and uh, Congress, uh, through uh, FOIAs, uh, through the powers that the congressional members have, get to the bottom of this. What, in fact, uh, in detail, were, was the Air Force recommendations and what role did uh, President Trump uh, make in this decision? Um, at this point in time, I want to introduce uh, Dirk Draper uh, from the Chamber of Commerce and Economic Development Commission. Uh, the chamber has been kind of the lead uh, for our community, did an outstanding job. I wish, unfortunately, uh, we could not, uh, when we made our presentation uh, to the Air Force, it was not a public presentation, but I wish everybody in the city could have been a party to it uh, and seen the compelling case that was made uh, for Colorado Springs to be the permanent home of Space Command. Dirk? Thank you, Mayor. I join the Mayor in uh, recognizing terrible disappointment at the announcement that we are hearing this afternoon about the permanent location of uh, U.S. Space Command, a decision so important to national security should be based on the merits that were identified by the Air Force and Department of Defense going forward and not on, on politics as this appears to have been done. I just uh, briefly for a moment reflect back that this is the second phase of this selection process. The first one concluded in uh, March, April of last year, at which time we understand, we've been advised by uh, sources in the Air Force that Colorado Springs was the recommended home for U.S. Space Command for the first phase of what, what was intended to be the phase of a selection process. Um, Florida's delegation, which was not included uh, in the evaluation process, successfully appealed to have that process reopened. And I'll pause for just a moment to note that uh, the President has close personal business, political, uh, personal and business and political ties to the state of Florida and reopened the process to include this second phase, which we've just now concluded. This second phase began with some 60 cities across the country who expressed interest. It narrowed down pretty quickly to six communities, of which Colorado Springs, Peterson Air Force Base was one um, considered a finalist. That second phase um, started last spring, and it concluded last week with uh, a physical visit by the, the Air Force Site Selection Team to Peterson Air Force Base and Kirtland Air Force Base in, in Albuquerque, and then that led to the announcements that we're addressing today. As the mayor alluded to, we also have heard from sources inside the Air Force that Colorado Springs in this second phase was the number one ranked community for this location and that external pressure from the president was uh, placed to award the permanent home of U.S. Space Command to, to a state, once again, to which the president has close political ties. We watched the events of last week and what's occurring this week and recognize that. If ever there was a trumped up decision, this feels like one. The mayor has identified the next steps, which we have been pursuing for the last 24 hours. We continue to pursue those, and that's in close, constant contact with our federal delegation, the governor, and from the chamber and EDC staff in, uh, with our partners here at the city and the county as well to make sure that um, we are, are pursuing all avenues to ask the Biden administration to at least suspend this decision to take no further action on it um, uh, upon the, uh, the President Bi President-elect Biden's uh, inauguration to suspend it until he and his team can do a full evaluation of this announcement. Um, the mayor identified steps to reach out to the Biden administration, and uh, we anticipate we're evaluating the feasibility of filing a FOIA request to find that additional information as well, um, the results of the evaluation process. The community partnerships, in closing, I'd say our community partnerships, which have been strong for the last two and a half years in pursuit of this, continue to pursue all avenues that we can to evaluate and evaluate how to get this decision reversed back to one that makes sense for national security space conditions. Mayor Southers, back to you for questions. Any questions that anyone has? Mayor, can you talk a little bit more about the politics of this? Um, I know that Alabama's a strong Republican state. Um, 
we lost a Republican senator in the previous election. I'm just wondering what you think about um, this being kind of like a plan by the president to try to get more support for the upcoming um, impeachment. And also, what are the chances that this decision could be reversed in the new administration? How permanent do you think this decision is? So it's kind of a two-part question, sir. Uh, let me just uh, state some facts in terms of the, the politics. Um, there was a primary in uh, Alabama between uh, Jeff Sessions, who had been appointed uh, attorney general by uh, President Trump, and President Trump, as you know, was very disappointed that uh, Sessions had uh, uh, exercised the prerogative for an appointment of a special prosecutor that led to the appointment of Robert Mueller to investigate uh, issues that we're well aware of. Um, when Mr. Sessions resigned as Attorney General and went back to Alabama, he ran to uh, uh, attempt to get back his uh, Senate seat. Um, the uh, former Auburn football coach, uh, Tommy Tuberville, uh, was uh, Senator uh, Sessions' uh, primary opponent. Uh, the President spent a great deal of time in Alabama uh, campaigning for uh, Mr. Tuberville, uh, wanting to the voters of Alabama to send uh, Sessions a uh, lesson. It was all about the loyalty of Tuberville to the president. Uh, Mr. Tuberville was elected uh, to the Senate, and as you may know, uh, last week he and a number of members of the Alabama congressional delegation uh, voted not to uh, recognize the electoral votes of uh, Arizona and Pennsylvania were the ones that the two that I think they had votes on. A uh, Republican congressman by the name of Mo Brooks was a speaker at the rally uh, prior to the president taking uh, uh, the stage back in Washington, D.C., uh, and that congressman had very in, uh, inciting statements uh, in uh, before the president took the stage, and of course we all know what uh, took place after that. Uh, bottom line is there's significant political connections uh, between the president and uh, the congressional delegation in Alabama and what perhaps he hopes uh, uh, they may uh, be of assistance to him as this thing um, uh, reveals itself. Uh, so that's the first part of it. Uh, second part of it, uh, I don't know. Uh, what the chances are. I do know that not a cent has been appropriated, uh, you know, to move uh, Space Command, and there will not, there'll be budget discussions ahead, and somebody's going to have to address the question, do we really want to spend billions of dollars moving Space Command uh, when it's in a particularly uh, stable place where the Space Command uh, personnel, including the Guardians and the, uh, the civilian personnel, love to live? Uh, and they have a lot of support from the community. Do we really want to do this? Uh, so it seems to me that it's uh, totally within the ability of the Biden administration and Congress uh, to reverse this decision. Uh, we'll, you know, whether it will happen or not, I don't know. I'm just saying, based on what we know, it darn well should happen. So, Mayor, would you agree then that this decision was personal then from President Donald Trump? And also, has the Biden administration acknowledged uh, the request to reverse this decision? There is no Biden administration as of yet. There is a, a Biden transition team. Um, and uh, both U.S. senators said there have been conversations with the Biden transition team. Um, there are some meetings set between members of the Colorado congressional delegation and the uh, uh, designee for the defense secretary. Uh, and these conversations about the inappropriateness of this decision will take place, uh, and we're a week away from there being a Biden administration. So those conversations uh, will continue. What was the first part of your question? Do you think that this is a personal, um, would you agree it's nothing but personal from uh, President Donald Trump in making this decision, which he just called inappropriate? As I say, all we have is sources uh, in the Air Force saying that uh, the Air Force recommendation was Colorado Springs, and the president directed this another, another direction. Uh, if that's the case, if you're asking me would I attribute personal motives to the president, absolutely. 
Um, I don't think the motive would be what's in the interest of the American taxpayer, what's in the interest of uh, national security. The motive would be uh, who have remained my political friends throughout this process and who should I reward as a consequence. I just have um, two questions from Westward. The first is, uh, if you go to the Biden administration with this, do they have the power to reverse this decision? And then what specifically are you going to FOIA? Uh, absolutely, they have the, uh, the power. As I say, not a dime has been appropriated. Uh, there is a six-year window. Uh, I guess there's about five left uh, where we are the provisional home of uh, Space Command, and over the next five years, you know, dollars to be appropriated uh, to move Space Command. Uh, absolutely, the Biden administration has the ability to say, uh, that's really stupid. Uh, why should we be spending uh, billions of dollars to do that uh, when we've got uh, uh, an operational uh, Space Command that's acting in the interest of national security uh, and uh, the, the American uh, uh, taxpayers. So absolutely they have that. Second part of the question. What specifically are you going to FOIA? I think Dirk well, mentioned that. Well, I would ask, uh, I would suggest Westward also do a FOIA. Uh, I would suggest the Gazette do a FOIA. I would ask that the Washington Examiner do a FOIA. I'd ask every uh, television station here to pursue your sources, uh, uh, to, to do your uh, FOIAs, and we will talk about what uh, sort of a FOIA the but what we want to know is, uh, and we don't want to see doctored documents, we want to see the original reports, what the recommendation was, and we want to know what the direction from the President of the United States was in response to that, uh, you know, what the role of the President was in this decision. Yes. Can you maybe tell me um, how you found out about this decision and what was your like initial reaction? Do you feel blindsided? Just tell me a little about that. Um, we, last night, uh, a source contacted uh, someone um, indicating that this was what was taking place. Um, it wasn't until probably this morning, do you wanna, he can elaborate on this. Uh, this morning, of course, an article came out from the governor of uh, Alabama, uh, and then the ball's really been rolling. At about 11 o'clock this morning, I received the first official word of this decision. It came from Carol Ann Bita. She's the director of strategic planning at the United States Air Force. Her team, uh, we've used the acronym SAF-IE, her, her team was doing the site selection process. She called me this morning at about 11 o'clock as the community's point of contact in this process. That's the first official word we have about this decision. We started hearing from sources, leaks, uh, late yesterday afternoon, and we started working to run those to ground to confirm that. Uh, second part of the question, uh, you know, I'm, I'm deeply disappointed, and, uh, you know, we haven't had a whole, a whole lot of uh, economic development uh, bad news in Colorado Springs in the last six years, and so from my perspective, uh, this would be, uh, you know, uh, my greatest disappointment from an economic development perspective over the last uh, six years. But, um, you know, if some of these sources bear out, uh, I, I do think it may well not be the end of it. I had two questions also. Uh, first part is, so the short term, we still have Space Command for a few years, right? Five. Five years. They're dedicated to Colorado right. Springs. And then also I wanted to know about uh, how your phone call with the governor, and if you could give us any more details, how that went down with the governor and senators. Yeah, they had all heard the same rumors. Uh, some of the senators' offices had been in the uh, on the telephone and, I, as I say, uh, got some uh, uh, sources in, in the higher echelons of the Air Force to con confirm uh, some of what we've been talking about here today. And we all, uh, the governor had, uh, has already put out a statement um, the uh, two um, United States senators are either going to put out separate or joint statements this afternoon. Congressman Lamborn and Con Congressman Crow are going to put out uh, statements. So we were all of one mind. Uh, we need to run this down. And basically, you know, I, I, I kind of like what Senator uh, Bennett had to say. You know, we have every reason to believe that there was a political influence uh, in this. If by chance there wasn't, it was still a bad decision. Uh, in the interest of the 
uh, taxpayers and national security, and we ought to make that case to the Biden administration, uh, but over and above uh, to the extent that there was uh, uh, political considerations that don't typically take place in a basing decision, uh, that is reason why the Biden administration and Congress uh, should intervene and uh, uh, move uh, in a different direction and put this ba- uh, uh, keep this in Colorado Springs. Um, I know you cited some numbers at the beginning of your talk, but could you put it into maybe a stronger perspective of if we don't get spaceman permanently, what this actually is going to mean to, to our economy? I, I just did a report a couple of months ago about there's even like a housing development that is being planned for out by Shriver Air Force Base, and most of that is just based on Space Command coming here. So can we talk more about exactly what the impact is likely to be for us? Uh, I think it's large. Um, let's, you know, there will be 1,400 active duty uh, uh, Space Force uh, guardians. Uh, so that's 1,400 active duty um, military personnel, their families, uh, spending money in the economy. Uh, the um, surrounding uh, uh, Defense uh, contracting uh, has incredible uh, potential. Uh, over time, it's billions and billions of dollars. There's no question about that. Do you have anything to add to that, Dirk? Just to, to clarify that, that uh, Mayor's comments, the estimates we have from the um, Colorado Space Coalition, their economic modeling of this impact was that it would, it, it's really an opportunity cost more than a current impact to our region's economy, just to be clear. The employment estimates for the U.S. Space Command is that it would be 1,400 total personnel. Uh, military personnel, men and women in uniform, would be approximately 40%. Private sector um, contractors would be about 60% of that number. The total economic output of the U.S. Space Command on an annual basis is estimate, they estimate it to be about $450 million a year from the direct economic impacts of, um, of U.S. Space Command. So 1,400 uh, total employment, about 40% uniform, about 60% civilian. Any other questions? Yes. Westward just had one other, um, and it's it's regarding the timeline of events, um, including the announcement that would happen when Gardner was running. Um, in the Senate race. So he says, was that reopening of the application for Space Command and awarding of provisional Space Command to Colorado, did that take place while Cory Gardner was running for Senate and then it totally flipped to Alabama and was that all a political ploy to award allies? The f- if I understand the first part of your question, um, the first phase when the decision was made to reopen the process it was announced that Colorado Springs Peterson Air Force Base would be the provisional headquarters for Space Command. It was last spring when Cory Gardner was running for re-election. That is correct. Yes, Wayne. I uh, don't know, Wayne. Um, it seems to me uh, if uh, the Biden administration can be convinced that uh, this was not an appropriate process, was not in the best interest of the uh, taxpayers or national security. The Biden administration could overturn it very quickly. Make no mistake about it, this is not something that Congress votes on. Uh, this is something that's done uh, by the executive branch. That's historically been the case with uh, uh, basing decisions. So uh, it could be very quickly. Uh, I would hope at least by the time that they start uh, crunching numbers uh, and come to their senses about what kind of money they're talking about to uh, move this thing that uh, at least at that point reality should set in. Was this decision supposed to be made right now or was it further out in the future that it was supposed to be made? No, uh, when the president was here, uh, he came uh, for the Air Force Academy graduation one time and I met briefly with him. And I met briefly with him uh, when he came for a political rally. I met him at the airport. And uh, at that time, uh, he indicated that he was going to make the decision, which was disconcerting to us that uh, 
it was not going to be made just strictly on, uh, by the Air Force, um, and that he would make it in January. Um, and uh, at that time, I'm sure he thought he would still be the president, uh, but that he would make it in, in uh, January. Um, and uh, so everybody expected it. Uh, when they reopened this process, they told us the decision would be made uh, before the change uh, uh, before the new inauguration, and that has in fact uh, uh, taken place. When uh, uh, you know we were uh, told uh, w when our virtual presentation, uh, Secretary of the Air Force uh, indicated a couple of times Secretary Barrett will make this decision. Uh, at a, the site visit last week, uh, we were told that Secretary Barrett would be taking. Uh, the matter to the president and the vice president, which we suspect did not happen. Of course, she told us that before the events of last week. And uh, that uh, uh, there could be a recommendation number one and a recommendation number two. Uh, that was a little disconcerting to us. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, since that time, uh, you have as much information as uh, we do. People seem to be acknowledging uh, one, an undersecretary of the Air Force acknowledges there was a meeting with the president, uh, things were discussed, um, and uh, uh, exactly uh, what direction the president uh, made was uncertain, but clearly he's weighed in in some form, and we need to get to the bottom of the uh, full nature and extent to which he's weighed in here. Mayor, I know that um, the extenuating circumstance here is that we thought that we were the leading candidate and probably was, we're going to be the candidate, but in kind of your effort to kind of maybe rectify what you feel was like a mistake in the process, um, how do you keep from sounding like it's sour grapes or whatever? Because a lot, all the other communities probably are going to be disappointed too that they didn't get it. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what the reaction of some of the other committees, uh, uh, the communities are. Um, I, I got it. It can sound like. Uh, um, sour grapes. I'm sure that's how uh, Alabama will uh, characterize it. Uh, but um, if Alabama had made the case that we had made uh, and they didn't get it um, and uh, there was evidence that uh, President Trump had intervened and resulted in it coming this way, I guarantee you uh, they would be uh, complaining uh, in the same way. Uh, the fact of the matter is um, there are, there's a lot of uh, indication here that uh, politics may have been involved. You bet. Embellish on a, a previous question. You had asked earlier about um, the, with the timing of the decision for Provisional Space Command and how it was connected to Senator Gardner's reelection campaign. I just want to be clear that uh, Senator Gardner has been a strong advocate um, for this community and, and for this process based on the military um, criteria, based on military assets that are here, one of which recognize the impact of relocating military families who would come here during the provis this provisional period. It's important to note for Space Force to be able to recruit personnel that they would have certainty, those personnel would have certainty of where they would be located for a period of time and to have no base, even on a temporary basis, would hamper their recruitment from other services and from civilians to, to join. I just want to be, be clear about that, that uh, how important that is. Uh, another element of that is um, that as we look at criteria, for example, I, I have uh, been, been following news from other communities throughout the day. One report, um, I think from Politico Space, identified that um, – um, one of the Air Force's personnel identified that um, Huntsville objectively related ahead of, re, excuse me, rated ahead of Peterson Air Force Base in every category. That can't be true. There are no Space Force assets in Huntsville today. There's missile defense agency assets, but there are no space operating assets. There are no Space Force assets in the city of Huntsville. Um, Peterson already houses. U.S. Space Command general officers um, on base at Peterson in houses with the required specialized and secured communications capabilities. 
Huntsville doesn't have the capacity to absorb those and will have to build the required housing. If Spacecom leaves Peterson, that'll be an additional expense of the, of the relocation. Just in terms of the impact on families and the impact on relocation and how that tied in, I want to be clear that that was an important component for, having, for naming a provisional headquarters uh, for this period of time. Okay, uh, everyone, thank you uh, for your time and attention this afternoon. Please go back to your offices and get those uh, FOIAs out. I appreciate it very much.